If you're a fan of the online survival genre of video games, then you might be familiar with a little-known game known as Ark Survival Evolved, developed by Studio Wildcard. It's got all the markings of a survival game. You traverse an open world, you scavenge for resources to build structures for your base or to craft weapons, you keep track of various meters like health, stamina, oxygen, hunger, thirst and weight, so on and so forth. But separating it from the rest of the pack is players' ability to encounter creatures such as dinosaurs and tame them. This somewhat novel concept has certainly made great strides and attracted a lot of players. Since its early access release on June 2nd, 2015, the game has amassed over 9 million players based on a report from June 2017, and I'd imagine that number has only grown further over the last year and a half. Now, when it comes to reception, I find that it's generally pretty mixed in large part because the game is woefully lacking in technical polish, but its core systems continue to attract and entertain players around the world, which is why so many were excited when Grapeshot Games, a sister studio to Studio Wildcard, announced a brand new game during the Game Awards 2018 called Atlas, which was being touted as a pirate-themed survival experience. Unsurprisingly, many were quick to draw comparisons to similar recently released titles like Sea of Thieves, with many hoping Atlas would be what Microsoft and Rare's underwhelming game should have been. However, to everyone's dismay, the launch of Atlas has so far proven to be nothing short of an unmitigated disaster. If you watched the Game Awards trailer for Atlas, then you know that the game was supposed to launch on December 13th, 2018. But then, two days before the release date on December 11th, Grapeshot Games suddenly announced that the game would be delayed by a week to Wednesday, December 19th, asking players for their patience so that the game can be reviewed and to be ensured that it's ready. Some people were understandably peeved, as it's not often that a company will announce a project one week away from launch and then announce a delay at the last minute. However, this being the game's first defense, most figured they could overlook this mishap and wait a little longer for the next game from the creators of Ark. So with that, another week went by, December 19th arrived, and many players expressed their anticipation for this title by tuning into numerous live streams featuring an official countdown for the game's release, with viewership for Atlas peaking at over 200,000 people. But once the countdown reached zero, streamers and viewers alike were dismayed to find that nothing happened, and it wasn't until around 30 minutes to an hour later that players were merely greeted with an extended Atlas trailer announcing that the game would be delayed by an additional two days to December 21st, 2018. Alongside the extended trailer, Grapeshot Games issued the following press release which reads, quote, Winds have not been favorable to reaching our destination of an Atlas launch onto Steam today, but now our sales are unfurled and the winds are strong. Atlas will finally go live on Steam this Friday, December 21st, opening up free ports entry points to all aspiring buccaneers as they begin their journey outwards to the wider world. The studio then tweeted another statement the following day on December 20th, which reads as follows, Atlas is launching on Friday the 21st of December 2018. When we have a precise time window, we'll let you know. Sorry for the wait, guys. We know you're excited to get in, and we're just as happy to have you play ASAP. We appreciate your patience throughout. Thank you. One delay a mere two days before launch is bad enough, but a second delay occurring after the game was supposed to launch and after an official release count down expired? Well, I don't have to tell you that this is a whole new level of incompetence. Unsurprisingly, people took to social media and forums to express their disdain towards a studio that kept dragging its players along for a game that clearly wasn't ready for release, with the likes to dislikes ratio on the YouTube upload of the trailer being pretty indicative of current sentiments. Alongside the announcement of a second delay, Grapeshot Games also tweeted that as they worked their way towards launch, they would be sending out staggered invites to content creators to test out their server nodes, specifying that progress would not be carried over with this build. The studio finally concluded their string of tweets with, the invites will continue to go out over the night and tomorrow as we get closer to launch and when we're satisfied. And assuming all our other ducks are in order, we'll be officially releasing the title onto Steam Early Access. So, the next day rolls by, it's December 21st now, and once again, there is no signs of the game to be found, not even for streamers who are supposed to get special invites. In response to mounting backlash and confusion, Alice tweeted this, 
Pathfinders. We expect early streaming of Atlas to start this evening at approximately 9 p.m. Pacific. Following that, the game will be ready for full early access launch tomorrow by noon Pacific time. We'll keep you updated should there be any changes. Thank you for your patience and support. People then found out that the description on the official Atlas Twitter page had been updated to state the game would now launch on December 22nd. December 22nd finally arrives, and it's 12.42 a.m. Eastern, or 9.42 p.m. December 21st Pacific at this point, well beyond the time that streamers were supposed to gain access to the game for live streaming, but once again, Atlas announced another delay, releasing the following post. We are still working on a build. We will let you know when we have something more concrete. We think it will take at least five hours. Check back in the morning for another update. Finally, 8 hours later on December 22nd, 8.21 a.m. Eastern or 5.21 a.m. Pacific, Grapeshot Games made it known that streamers are finally receiving keys, though many complained about the quantity and rate at which keys were being handed out, as well as about the selection of streamers. Another 6 hours later on December 22nd, 2.21 p.m. Eastern or 11.21 a.m. Pacific, the Atlas Twitter page announced that servers would be going offline and progress would be wiped so that the game's early access can finally launch at 3 p.m. Eastern or 12 p.m. Pacific. When the time for launch finally arrived, another tweet was posted noting one more short delay stating the following, Pathfinders, our official test servers, are now undergoing maintenance. Atlas is currently being pushed through to the Steam Store as an early access title and should be purchasable by 12.15 p.m. It takes a little bit of time to get through the system. Downloads can begin shortly. At long freaking last, on December 23, 2018, at around 3.30 p.m. Eastern and 12.30 p.m. Pacific, Atlas Early Access finally launched with a price tag of $30 that's been discounted to $25 until January 2nd, though I use the word launch liberally given the numerous issues buyers encountered. There are reports out there of people being unable to purchase the game on Steam for some time, and more egregiously, the servers were down for hours before they finally went online and people were able to play the game. Even once players managed to gain access, they were met with a product that could hardly justify its current price tag, even by early access standards. One look at the Steam page will reveal that reviews so far have not been at all favorable, with its rating currently sitting at mostly negative. Aside from the numerous issues the game is having with unstable servers, and with people being unable to log in because of low server capacity, the most egregious discovery was how little effort was put into distinguishing Atlas from Wildcard's other game, Ark. One particular discovery that's been making the rounds is the fact that it's actually possible to open Ark's menu within Atlas by scrolling down to an invisible button below the exit prompt on the main screen. Within Ark's menu inside Atlas, something else people noticed was that there is a never-before-seen piece of downloadable content for Ark called Ocean listed there. Clicking on it will take players directly to the Atlas character creator, with the potential implication being that Atlas isn't even a new game, but rather a pirate-themed DLC for Ark that ended up as a standalone product while being sold as something entirely new. So it would seem as though what Atlas essentially amounts to is a low-effort reskin or asset flip of Ark that, according to many players' accounts, somehow functions even more poorly. This is especially apparent during gameplay, which players found to be damn near identical to Ark in terms of mechanics, the UI, the textures, everything, except with a pirate skin layered on top. It doesn't seem like any significant strides were made on improving the engine, on modernizing the visuals, on fixing technical issues plaguing their previous release, and on changing up the core gameplay. So aside from the fact that the road to launch for Atlas was a complete and utter shitshow, the game itself turned out to be nothing more than a lazy cash grab, falling woefully short of the experience advertised in the trailers. Here is one top-rated review on Steam highlighting their qualms with the game, which reads, quote, Opened a hidden arc menu in the main menu screen with a controller. Go down in the menu till the cursor goes off the screen and press A. Clicked on Ocean under the list of arc DLCs. Clicked on Start in single player. 
game booted in a single player mode and threw me into the character creator screen. This game was originally a DLC planned for ARK, but because all the hardcore ARK players bought the season pass, then that means they won't get money. So they released this piece of trash to take as much money from you as possible with little to no effort. Please stay away from this game, don't support the developers. Here's one more. Do not buy this game in its current state. It's a reskin of ARK that is somehow worse than ARK. If you look in the game's install folder, there are folders literally called Scorched Earth and Aberration just reusing assets from ARK. And on top of that, if you have a controller plugged in, scroll down to the bottom of the options on the main menu. If you scroll down one more past that, there's another invisible menu option. Hit A or X or whatever on your controller and it opens up the ARK menu. It even shows options to choose which which ARC DLC you want to play, edit map options, etc. For a game that according to the developers has a chance to be the greatest of all time, this is utter bleep. It is literally a reskinned ARC that is less functional. Look back at ARC's development. Launched early access for $30, then a paid $20 DLC was released in early access, and then the price later went up to $60 and another paid DLC came out. Be smart, expect the same from Atlas. So yeah, I guess the bottom line here is that you'll probably want to stay as far away from Atlas as humanly possible. The level of incompetence surrounding its launch is unprecedented, and the intentions surrounding this project are blatantly dubious at best. My recommendation would be that you find much better ways to spend $25 to $30 on Steam, especially during the holidays when all kinds of great sales are going on for titles of much higher caliber and integrity. These are one man's perspective anyway, I'd love to hear what your take is on the disastrous launch of Atlas in the comments below. With that, I would like to end this news update. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy my content and would like to support this channel directly, consider donating on Patreon. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.